Good morning folks and welcome to Armitage Leather and my review on pricky lines or better described as my ramblings. I have been using pricky irons and wheels for 25 years. The vast majority of time has been with Dixon's iron and that's mainly because that's what's been available. Um, there are others available and we'll get to that but um, the old Barnsley company that used to make irons, they're, they're long since gone. Um, and there has been a very um, stark decline in the tools available for the leather industry recently, however. Um, companies have started adding pricking irons to their lines, or stitching irons, because they're slightly different. Uh, and I'll qualify that now, actually. Now, a pricking iron uh, isn't designed to penetrate all the way through the leather, it's designed to uh, mark holes that nonetheless you do go into the leather, probably about one and a half mil thereabouts, and that's sufficient for you to start uh, going into the leather with your rule to give yourself a straight line. Very important to give yourself that straight line. Stitching irons, and that not, may not be the right term, there are so many different terms, and every time you look at one, it's termed different a stitching chisel, uh, and so on and so forth. But it is an iron and it's used for stitching, so I've just called them stitching uh, irons. They fully penetrate, they go all the way through. And a pricking iron, to use a big massive one here, this is the Joseph Dixon uh, inch and a half wide, uh, six stitches to an inch iron. And we'll look at this in more detail because it, it will be part of the review. Uh, these teeth or prongs are tapered. So they are flat at the end, very fine, and this is what cuts. But as you come down towards the body of the iron, they broaden up. So if you try and penetrate with this, it's, it's like a wedge that's just going to drive in and you, your leather's going to be here and you're going to have a massive, massive hole. Now, if we look at one of the stitching chisels, the difference that we notice here is the length of the teeth is the same from the tip all the way to the body. So therefore you can drive this all the way through and the hole won't increase in size. That's the size of the hole that you're going to get. You can use these as pricking irons by just tapping in, then going in with the all after or penetrate all the way through if that's what you want to do. Now this is, these are new, the, the, these haven't been round uh, for that long, whereas pricking irons have been round a good length of time. And these I think are, well I'm certainly finding these very interesting, I, I hope you will too. We'll look at these in more detail, there's quite a few of these on the market. Um, like I say, the opinions are mine, this is what I think. Uh, we go back to the likes of the Dixon iron that I've been using for 25 years. Uh, I can talk all day on, on this iron. We look at the new ones that are available off eBay and from Goods Japan and Tandy and a number of other companies. Um, these haven't been around long and I haven't been playing with these for years. So this review is based on me having a relatively short amount of time to practice with each one and, and try it out to different degrees. Uh, so I might not get everything right. You may have had one of these from the outset and think that it's the best thing since sliced bread and what I'm saying isn't correct. Please, shout up. I don't know everything. Some stuff that I don't know, I'll randomly make up on the spot. You'll get used to that in my videos. However, if I do have a fact that's wrong, then shout up. I don't want to... Um, put across the wrong information in any way, shape or form. One thing that I will highlight is I do not know my steels. I'm not a metallurgist, uh, or however you would say that. Uh, I'll look at a piece of steel and say it's steel. I'm not entirely sure if it's carbon, if it's stainless, or what. Um, so, in the grand scheme of things, I may call something a particular type of steel. It could be wrong. Do please let me know if I have got it wrong. I have emailed a number of the companies. I have had some responses back, but not all. So some of it's a little bit of a wing and a prayer. Um, we'll take it from there. We'll start off with the Tandy iron and we'll see how we get on. But enjoy. So let's have a look at the Tandy iron. Now, before I do that, what I've done for each iron that I've looked at, I've done a sheet. This sheet is put together in a PDF format and is available for download from my website. If you go to the shop at the back, it's free. Uh, 
if you want to make a donation of a quid or something please feel free i've got no issue with that however if you don't it's free it's free totally free to download it's all the irons that i've got um there will be a sheet for each one and to to give you an idea just to sort of spin that around so you might as well have a nosy of it while um i'm going through it we've got the tandy make we've got the model um, we've got the other options available where to get it from we've got the overall size and, and the important aspect is the size of the teeth uh, and the depth that they can go because that's going to ultimately dictate the type of stitch you can get so and, and my views in there and and what i think the pros and cons are of this particular iron um, and how it performs so it's a case of um, having a look and that's what we're going to do on the video and then having a read once you've downloaded the um, the PDF document and, and then you can make an informed decision about which one is best for you uh, but like I say um, I may not and I'm not saying this is the case I may not find one particular iron um, particularly good but you however may say well that's the bee's knees and that's the one for me you need to find your own path very important um tandy gets a i read an awful lot of information about tandy uh, about the quality of their tools uh, and and it's mixed it really is um I'm, I'm not defending and i'm not promoting tandy in any way shape or form i just think that everybody needs a fair crack of the whip Tandy, to me, create tools that are cheap, that make leather available to the masses. And that cannot be a bad thing at all. And I appreciate as people progress, the idea of Tandy tools um, aren't necessarily promoted because the quality of the tool isn't fantastic you look at some of the tools you look at jeremiah watts tools um his tools are staggeringly uh, perfect they're they're exquisitely made they do the job particularly well um but they carry a price tag so let's call that 55 quid you look at uh, let's say for instance an overstitch wheel I, i'm digressing i do appreciate that but but there's a point to it you look at the overstitch wheel for Tandy and you're looking at £10. But you could buy five Tandy tools for one Jeremiah Watt tool. Now, if you're taking the craft seriously, spend the money on your tools. Buy the best tool that you possibly can. If you're just starting out, it's no good tying your entire budget up on one tool. You can buy five tools and then you can find out. You can upgrade after. And Tandy seem to have hit that market where they will have a go at the hobbyist or the people that want to try out. And, and they need to be promoted for that because the leather industry is suffering and they're helping keeping the low level affordable approach to leather work available it's still there you, you you can go into tandy you can come out after spending a hundred quid and have enough tools and materials to actually make something and if you then decide to take it up more seriously you can then increase your toolbox from there so give them a fair crack of the whip they're, they're, they're not making tools for your seasoned um professionals i appreciate um but there is a place for them now this is the tandy pricky nine now the one that i have here is the double eight zero double five ten now to qualify that i need to go back to my crib sheets this will give me a stitch length of two and a half mil okay so two and a half mil will give me roughly nine stitches per inch or thereabouts and there's quite a bit of information on the width the length in the sheet that you can read at your leisure i'm not going to tie the video up but what i am going to do is concentrate on the teeth now coming back to the crib sheet because it is quite important and i have used a vernier to measure all of these the interesting aspect about this is the teeth are almost 10 mil long that's 9.75 so they will penetrate quite a long way but there are issues in relation to going into 10 mil of leather. It becomes very difficult to, to deal with it if it gets stuck. Um, 
the width of the teeth are 2.6 and that's quite big that's almost 3 mil so that's going to leave quite a chunky hole and the thickness is 1.2 mil now that is quite impressive and that's very very thin which will give you a very very thin line of stitching so let's have a look at what this tool does on a piece of leather so we've got a piece of leather here and we'll run a nice line across the top the thing about it being thin is when you make a line you can fit that into the line very easily it's visibly very easy to use now we've gone all the way through the leather we are actually looking at bringing the teeth out the back of the leather the teeth on the inside are a little rough and as a result of them being rough bringing the iron out is a little tough so these little edges on the inside here are quite rough you can hear that whereas the front is quite smooth now if you're going to buy yourself a set of tandy irons spend a bit of time polishing these off that will make it so much easier to drive it in and pull it out and we can see the stitch holes that they've made are actually quite nice and we'll just carry on to the end of that line again doesn't take much nice and sharp nice and even and what I'm going to do now is just zoom in so you can get a good idea of what those holes look like and the teeth now you can see a little closer that the inside of this tooth is quite rough and that's what's going to make it stick but that gives a very nice very even row of holes the important thing that I'm finding about the stitching chisel over the pricking of the, the stitching iron over the pricking iron is you don't need to use an awl and the biggest issue that a lot of people are having with the awl is when you mark your hole if your awl goes in at an angle then the hole comes out in a different place on the back and if you then vary that for the next hole the stitching on the back of the piece that you're making looks quite poor the stitching on the front may look nice but the stitching on the back um, is let down because of your awl work and that's one of the harder things to use in the English saddle stitch is the awl so the stitching iron over the pricking iron has taken the necessity for the awl away because we've made a very straight very neat row of holes on the front in addition we have a very straight and very neat row of holes on the back and the interesting point is and this is a John James uh, number two needle I wouldn't necessarily recommend a number two for this size I'd go for a number four but it goes straight through no all at all because this is given as thereabouts and it is thereabouts nine stitches to an inch i'm going to stitch this with 0.6 tiger thread i think that'll suit this row of stitching quite well and we'll have a look at how this particular iron stitches okay i'm set up with a pair of john james number four needles and I have a length of bonded polyester tiger thread 0.6 mil this is black this one I'm using the Tandy number 10 and that is giving me nine stitches or 9.3 stitches to the inch thereabouts so what I'm going to do is stitch and you can see that the number four needles go through the hole with virtually no effort at all even when I put the second needle in the back and I've filled the hole with one thread there's no sticking at all and there's no all work 
I'm not using an awl at all because I've fully opened up those holes to allow the stitcher. So what this is doing is removing any error. Over the years people have used all sorts, forks, drills, nails, any number of things to stitch or mark stitch holes to get an even consistent stitch and you can see how quick this is going this isn't taking long at all I'm using a single piece of 3 mil untreated veg tan to stitch the holes are staying open I think if you were in an environment that was slightly damp and the moisture was being absorbed into the leather the holes may close up you could probably still use an awl to open up the holes but because there's already a hole there the hole that you're opening up is going to remain straight front to back there's no margin for error or the other way around that i suppose is there's a massive margin for error um, because there's no mistake to make so we'll just turn that round and that is a reasonable row of stitching now it looks to be fair quite flat there and we'll look at the back and that looks quite flat also and, and this is one of the minor bones of contention that I have with this particular iron is whilst they've made it exceptionally thin and going back the thickness of the um, tooth is 1.2 mil which is very very thin however I think because they've made the tooth so thin and almost 3 mil wide we're ending up with almost a slot when you start to put pressure on the thread it flattens out but what I'm going to do now is just tap it down and seat because the tapping down does two things it seats the thread down but more importantly closes the leather around the hole so now all of a sudden we can see that there is an angle to the stitch it has stitched nicely front and back very very simply but those holes are quite long that's that's a three mil hole that, that's quite big i like it it works it's made of um i believe stainless steel it is i haven't had to sharpen it it comes very very sharp it's well presented it's well made it's strong it's a good weight it's lovely engraving on there it's the craft tool pro I think they've got it right. I think they could improve upon it and they could improve upon it by making the whole thing a little thicker or making these teeth a little thinner and I think that would angle the stitch better. Now they do a number of these irons in the range. They do 2.5 um, giving 10 teeth uh, they do 3 mil, 3.5. They do 1, 4 and 10 teeth in the 2.5 and the 3 mil. And they do 8 teeth, 1, 4 and 8 teeth in the larger one, in the 3 mil. There is no 2 tooth option. Now the 1 tooth option, uh, I don't see a 0.4 because... That's a one tooth option. It's already there. Having a tool that is the same shape as that tooth doesn't make any sense to me because you can't measure the next hole from the last one with one tooth. You're still having to find a way of measuring how far apart those holes have got to be and keeping your line straight. With a two, two tooth option, um, you put the last tooth into the last hole or the first tooth into the last hole and then that marks your next hole. You're only making one hole at a time, I appreciate, but when you're going around very tight corners or bends, 
you take your time anyway and you will get a correct stitch length. A single tooth option doesn't make any sense to me. I'd like to see Tandy drop the single tooth option and make a, a double tooth option. Either narrow these teeth down or broaden them up to give a more of a slant. And what we'll do is we'll just come back to the leather as an example if they stick stick it in and pull now these holes look quite angled but they're actually quite shallow and as you start to put the pressure on this area to this area it's only 1.2 mil apart actually flattens down and that's what happens to the stitch it does angle there is an angle there it's very very subtle but it could do with being a little bit more that that is all but if that's the one that you buy you will not be unhappy with it and bearing in mind that if you use a different thread or a different leather the stitch will change again what i didn't do was put a knot one of my um passing the thread over the needle into it which would assist the angle a little greater and we'll have a look at that in fact now i've made mention of it i think it possibly important to have a look just a little short run and on this occasion when i return it through i'm going to put that turn in and that should encourage the thread that comes out on the face to the top of the hole a little more and that may give the stitching a slighter angle than it already has or slightly more of an angle than it already has And it has. So that little turn, it'd be nice if it wasn't absolutely necessary. Let's just tap it down. Now that's made quite a difference. That's lifted the angle and that's made a very nice stitch. I'm pleased with that and you would be too 0.6 mil thread number four needles 2.5 mil tandy stitching chisel and that looks good you could not argue with that stitching and not at all in sight that is achievable by somebody starting out from the outset and you're looking at um, between 28 and 37 pounds for that and when you look at the, the cost of the Dixon Osborne, you're looking at 55 plus. Blanchard, you're looking at 150 plus for an iron of this sort of size. Really, that's not bad value for money. I think that Tandy have added something that's attainable for a lot of people. In addition to that, that actually does quite a nice job. If I made a project with that, um, and came up with that level of stitching all the way around the project, I wouldn't be unhappy. Let's have a two prong option. Let's drop the one prong, don't need it. Um, the four prong, ideal for, for little short bits, ends of straps, all sorts of detail, always useful. However, let's have a two prong, even if you had a two prong and a ten prong, that'll, that's all you need. You could do everything with that yeah you'd be very very happy and you can have all of that a two set uh, for under 40 50 quid that's not bad going i'd be pleased with that folks it's and you can hear it ringing nice bit of stainless steel 
I have given it a reasonable hammer. It goes through the leather quite easily. You can see that very, very easy if you want to just give that a lick on the mop just to take uh, the rough edge off. Um, I, I, I'm quite impressed with this. I think Tandy have done uh, a good job of this iron. Um, just just looking at changing the stitch ever so slightly by adding, and let's face it, this, this overhand um, turn that I put on the needle, it changes with different levers. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. Maybe with thinner leather you won't need it, and that's where this will excel. This is 3mm uh, untreated Vegetan. But certainly that row of stitching can't be argued with. That looks lovely. So yeah, that's, that's a winner. I'm pleased with that. Uh, not a bad effort at all. Well done, Tandy.